Manas, the nature of quantum physics changes our perception of what's really real. You've talked about non-locality as perhaps the most important part of showing the power of quantum physics to undermine our traditional sense of what reality is. How does, how does that work? Non-locality sort of breaks down all our belief systems that come about because of our sensory input. Because we see the world as made up of separate objects. Um, the chair, the chair yeah. you, me, yeah. the wall around us, this beautiful setting. And, but then you have non-locality. That is a foundational aspect of quantum theory. All right, tell me what locality means in general, so and then what non-locality. So locality would be an object, like my watch, is on my hand, but it's really separate from my hand. Uh, my glasses and the face, but they're really separate from my face. The, that's locality. Non-locality would be, well, they're all, in some simplistic way, correlated and related to each other. You can't really separate them. Even if, Down they, even, a deep if they, level. even if they seem to be separated. If they, if they seem to be separated, or if they are created, quote unquote, if they are, mm. let's say you have two particles in the laboratory, and you're together, and then you separate them, actually they're always linked together. Mm. That's non-locality. Okay, so, and, and that's irrespective of distance. This particular non-locality, exactly right, will be independently of distance. It could be from here to the edge of the universe, and those particles are still related to each other. Now, normally when we think of things affecting each other, it's like a typical billiard ball, that one has to hit, touch the other and move it. But you're saying that there can be a relationship between them that does not involve that. It is the relationship that is the most important, exactly right. It's the relationship that keeps them together. And even though they appear to be separate, they're related to each other, even very, very far away from each other. This is one type of non-locality. There are other types of non-locality. OK, to understand this one, though, it's so, it's so important, like the concept of gravity. Well, that, that acts between bodies when they're not touching each other, but there's a diminishing return. It's inversely proportional to the square and things like that. So there's a physical relationship. But what you're saying is the kind of non-locality in quantum physics, there's no diminution as you, as you extend the distance. And in fact, it can be an infinite distance and there is no diminution of the relationship. But actually, there's not a force. You mentioned gravity. Right, right. In modern physics, actually, there's not even a gravity because in Einstein's right, right, sure. theory of general right. relativity, it's not the force, but it is a curvature right, right. of space-time. Right. So, but there is something that appears to be a force, an influence that affects the motion of one particle because the existence of the other particle. In the case of non-locality, they don't really act on each other, but they're related, they're correlated. Mm. Okay, you talk about three different types of non-locality. Let's go over them. So the first one, which we were just discussing, uh, namely the non-locality across space, mm. it can be vast different distances. It can be from here to the Andromeda Nebula or way beyond. And the two particles, if they have been produced or started from a specific quantum state, even after they become separated, they're related to each other they're still correlated, mm. as we say. If you make a measurement on one, the property of the other particle will not be randomly chosen from a set of possibilities, but it will have a value given by quantum theory because of its correlation with the first mm. one. Okay. That it is the type one uh, non-locality. Right. The second type of non-locality has to do across time. 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 In other words, we usually think of, I drop an object, it falls to the ground, it makes a noise when it strikes the ground. Okay, that's cause and effect. In this second type of non-locality, actually, the sound can come before you drop the object, if we want okay. to be figured, you know, be poetic about it. But basically what it means is that time is entangled. The past and the future, are entangled, 
in the effective future appears as if it influences the present and the past. And this can be so-called proven with experiments, I mean real... These are actual experiments that have been performed in the laboratory and all these things we're talking about, they're not philosophical statements, they're actually outcomes of specific measurements in the laboratory, which makes it very exciting because quantum theory then is testable. What you're doing is generalizing to the macroscopic world something that exists on the very small microscopic world. Is that legitimate? So it would be legitimate if indeed quantum theory is a basic physical theory. And there are a number of us, in fact, I would say the majority of physicists who today believe that quantum physics is the foundation of all physics. And therefore, if that is the case, then what we see at the micro world, microcosm, you know, the world of the atoms, the world of particles, is it possible that it also spills over to the world of everyday experience? And I believe it does. Uh, one principle that is very useful in chemistry, in fact, it's responsible for the chem chemical bonds that hold atoms and molecules together, is the so-called Pauli exclusion principle, which only allows electrons to come together in specific uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. And if it was not for that principle, there would be no chemistry, yeah, there would sure. be no plants, there yeah. would be no phase yeah. of a human being. So actually it spills over into the microscope. Hmm. Type three, non-locality. Type three, non-locality is both in space and in time. Type one was in space. Type two was in time. Type three, we are saying is actually the real one. It's the only one and it entangles space and time. And what's the implications of that? It seems uh, rather large. It would imply, and actually there's now some views uh, in quantum theory uh, that support this view, it would imply that the universe is connected at every possible level. So would it be fair to say that type one non-locality is pretty standard quantum physics? Everybody accepts that. In type two, generally because of uh, a few experiments, but it's, it's much less definitive than type one, where you have non-locality in time. Right. And type three is uh, sort of a philosophical generalization that you're bringing to it, which uh, uh, is, is really not supported by Experiment. It's a fair um, assessment to call it philosophical, <laughs> uh, but in fact, if the other two take place, then the third one must also take place, because space and time, we know from general relativity, are not separate from each other. So if you have something that appears to be no local in space and something that appears to be no local in time, then it is possible to have things that are non-local in space-time. So if I give it all to you, type one non-locality in distance, type two in time, and type three, this entanglement of space and time, what does it mean for ordinary people like me? What it means for all of us, ordinary people and everybody, is that reality is really profoundly different than what it appears to us through our senses.